yes, yes, yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. Austin, Texas, what's going on? It is your boy, Robert. Uh, uh, smile. We're here today on The Ilwa Show. I got a great guest for y'all today. I'm joined by my friend and great musician, Mr. Mobley. What's going on, my man? How are you doing today? I'm, I'm hanging in there. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you for, you know, taking out your time and being with us today, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about yourself for everybody out there in Ibelin that don't know. Yeah, I, uh, I'm a musician. Um, I am a songwriter, producer. Uh, I am based here in Austin, Texas. And uh, I make records and um, play live shows uh, in kind of this um, like single person configuration that's it's kind of uh, a little bit wild that involves me basically running all over the stage, playing a bunch of different instruments, trying to recreate what I've done on the records. Um, I moved here um, almost 10 years ago now and, um, and have been doing music full time as my, my only job for about three or four years. And uh, I have some new music out. Uh, the first two singles from my record are called Nobody's Favorite, which we released just before uh, everything started going wild with the pandemic. And then uh, about two and a half weeks ago, we put out an, another song called James Crow, which is the new single. Your music, like if you just want to enjoy your music, if it's like for the people that uh, say, if you just like want to think it's about love songs, that's totally cool. You're okay with that. But if you care to actually go behind that music and to take a deep dive into the lyrics, then that's what it's really meant for. Can you explain or expound on that a little bit for uh, for your fans out there? That may not just yeah. kind of just hear your hear your music for the first time and they just they they get caught in sort of that trendy that kind of trendy vibe. I so with with the last record I put out, which was called Fresh Lies, Volume One, that was actually the entire idea. All of them are written as love songs, but the the relationship in the song is a metaphor for my relationship with the country, um, right. in particular as a black man. Um, but these newer songs. Uh, they're a little bit more direct. Um, I still, I still wanted them to be enjoyable. If you, you know, you turn your brain off and it's got a good groove and a good melody that, that you can remember. Um, but I like, I like to think of my songs a lot of time as, as a Trojan horse for, for you know, more challenging like ideas. So, you know, <laughs> very it, subtle, it, kind of swooping yeah, underneath there. Like, yeah. oh, you can enjoy it if you want, but there is a message in between those words there. <laughs> yeah. If you like yeah. that. That's amazing. Yeah. So like, do you go in like, so let's say like you're in the, the songwriting process. Do you like intently go in there saying, I have a message to deliver? Cause I know that you talked about like using your platform, like, okay, you're here basically when you're on your own stage, you're the one that has the mic, people are listening to you. So you know, they're going to be listening to your song, but do you go into every song that you write with a, a particular message that you're trying, you're trying to disseminate to your fans? Honestly, no. Um, I am not a talented enough songwriter to do that. <laughs> basically, basically uh, the way it very happens. Much hard. You're very much hard, man. <laughs> well, thank you. But but I, I very much um, I very much feel like the songs kind of come to me in the way that they want to come to me. And then it's my job to figure out what what they're about. And so um, a lot of times I'll be writing words and uh, I'll, I'll have the song maybe halfway written and I'll be like, what is this about? Like, what am I, what do these words mean? And right. usually, usually in the middle of the process, I kind of figure out what I, what my interpretation of them is and kind of craft the message around that. But, um, but honestly, it's, it's a pretty mystical process to me. Like they, they just kind of, they come when they come and then I try, I, I view myself really as more of a, of a custodian to them. And I, so I try to, I, I try to give them the best treatment that I that I can with the skills that I have uh, and and then try to try to convey the messages in them to people as best I can. So like, we're going to have to talk a little business here. Of course, we know with the way things have been lately, um, like we're in the middle of a, of a pandemic, so to speak. Uh, how has that changed the way you kind of do things and for its business in your shows? Have you felt the hit of that, of not actually being able to go on stage and play in front of crowds? And what has that done for your music? Yeah, it's um, it's been massive. I mean, most of my most of my living uh, for the past five years 
has been has come from getting up on stage and, and putting on shows. And so obviously that's completely gone away right now. Um, so it's been a it's been, been a really big hit for us, uh, but we've been you know, in, in a lot of ways, we're, we're very fortunate. Um, we were in a pretty good position before everything started. I, you know, I have obviously I, I have a roof over my head and I'm, right I'm I have food on the table. So I'm very grateful uh, for all that. But uh, but yeah, undeniably, it's been it's been a really big hit. And so I've tried to I've tried to pivot in a couple different ways. First, just trying to find new ways to connect to people um through mm -hmm. throughout all this weirdness but but then also just trying to make time to focus on being creative uh and and coming up with new music and new art so that when all this does open back up i have i have all that ready and i can just get out on the road and, and hit it again again absolutely so like speaking of of kind of just staying connected in your creativity i looked at one of the films that you did where it was a collection of a lot of uh, the austin uh, top just artists in general because not all of them were musicians necessarily right there were yeah. it was about six of y'all i think it was uh I think uh, Jim Eno, Sarah Jones, Emily Basama, a few, a few more, uh, uh, Shelly, AJ Haynes, and uh, I think there was uh, one more on there. But I saw, I saw that what you did and on that, and you, it was for, for charity. So do you want to talk about that? Do you have that charity that you want to talk about? Yeah, this? yeah, that was a really fun project uh, where I kind of oversaw this collaborative film uh, between a bunch of musicians and filmmakers from the area, but we raised. Uh, over $25,000 for the Central Texas Food Bank, which was oh. great, but also for this new uh, charity called the Dawa Fund, which provides direct relief to people of color who are in the service industry, uh, in healthcare, and in the arts. And uh, that was really important to me because uh, so often when you're trying to find ways to help people, you when you're going through nonprofits, there's all this overhead, you know, they'll have fancy galas that that money will go to for fundraising and then there are all these strings attached for the people who are being benefited but um the way the dawa works is it's just a direct transfer of of cash um right on. to the people who need it and with with no strings attached and 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 no hurdles to jump over so especially right now with things being as dire for as many people as they are um that felt like a really important thing to do well, I definitely appreciate that and taking the lead on that, man. I, I think one of the guys that was speaking on there, I think it was a Jim Eno, was kind of super surprised about how just how well together that project came. And I looked at it and a lot of different sounds and a lot of different imagery that went into that. So, man, that was uh, kudos on to everything y'all did on that. Thank you. Um, you stay pretty active on your Twitter. <laughs> I, took, I took a look at that and I was like, yeah, this guy's pretty active. One of the things, one of the slogans that I caught on there is like, I don't, I don't, what did you say? I think it was like, I don't think I use the term people are a piece of work enough. <laughs> I don't know why that stood out, but I just feel like there's just, it's such a, such a, like a under the, under the radar, under the cover way of, you know what, people are really a piece of work. So what did you mean by that? I don't have a chance to ask you. What did yeah. you, what, was there something going on when that happened? You try. You're trying to get me. You're trying to get me to 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 uh, out, out myself on my sub tweet. Bro, listen, that's my job, bro. That is what I'm here for. That's what. I, and the people want to know. Like then we have a chance. To, then we have a chance to find out. I was talking to one of my friends, and he's a little bit older than I am. Uh, we were talking about we had been dealing with this person who was just who had gotten out of pocket the way people get out of pocket sometimes. As they do. Yeah, and he was like. Yeah, they're really a piece of work. And I was like, I don't think anybody's ever said that to me, but it's the perfect way to say, it's the perfect way to say exactly what you're saying. I was like, exactly. I need to start saying that more. I need to say Exactly. Start you know, we got to put that on a shirt now. Like put on a little, yeah, that's, that's for sure. Yeah. I love that, man. So you stay pretty, you stay pretty active. I love that you use your, your platform for everything you do. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't may not know about you is that you also do art as well. Mm -hmm. So do like, you, I, th I feel like you you have a lot of music and instruments that you touch on. For your artistry, where, is, where do you think you get your kind of inspiration for your music and art from? Man, I so I I take a really um, I take a really expansive view of inspiration, and so I really think um, you know everything 
everything influences it. The the conversations I have, like people like yourself, um, the books I read, you know, the I I've, I've said this before, but like I, I I don't see any reason why the person who designed the chair I sit in when I'm writing my song shouldn't get a credit on the song because like you know, the chemistry in my body is impacted by that. And somebody put a bunch of time and effort into thinking like it's somebody else's art form. Like, how do I create a chair that, you know, yeah. is going to is going to is going to shape somebody's experience in this way or that way? Uh, so really, I, I, I've I've I view these things as being I, I view authorship, you know, and the process of creating things being really way, way, way more radically collaborative and diffuse than we than we usually talk about it. but um but that's a long way to way of saying i i think i think it's everything it's everything that that uh, that i'm experiencing you know absolutely so i was kind of doing a little bit more reading and one of the interesting things that so you moved here you you know you're not officially born here but you moved here and one of the things i was reading was that with your band um there was a time and point where you were here in austin but you weren't playing like you were just here. Like yeah. maybe it was like, I think you talk, talked about having some discipline enough just to really practice in on your craft. How tough was that to be in basically the live music capital city of the world and not want to go out there and you're seeing people around you play. You're seeing things happen. You're just like, ah, oh, I know you have to, like, you have to be killing your side. Like, yeah. oh, I want to be out there playing. But like, did it, do you think looking back at it now, it helped? helped you get to this point to where you've almost like you feel like you've you know you're perfecting your craft and music definitely i um you know the the reason a big part of the reason that i moved here and the number one reason that i took that approach i was here for um almost a year or maybe even a little more than a year with my band before and we were we had all the songs and everything um but before we ever played a show was I came from North Carolina and uh, a local band from Austin, the Octopus Project, uh, was touring in our area and we got to open for them. And we got up and played and it was whatever, it was fine. And then yeah. they got up and they just killed us. They just totally, like we had no business being on the same stage as them. <laughs> and the great, I call those the great humblers. You're a humbler. Yeah, yeah, it was a real <laughs> The great humbling. equalizer. You may be here and we'll yeah. be right back down here. Uh, yeah, you need those. Down. You need those in life. Those are awesome moments. It's so important. It's yeah, so, it's so important, important man. And, and so I was like, okay, I have this list now of like 25 things that need to be better about the way that I'm doing this. And so we moved here and we just went to shows all the time and just put together our show, um, perfected it. Any, if anybody who's been to my shows knows, like I, I carry, um, I, there's video in all of my shows for every yeah. song and there's a light show and lots of interactivity um and that started back then uh of just just having wanting to have a real work ethic around uh really committing to to giving people a show um and even now when i whenever i want to add a new song to my set it takes about 75 hours of work oh wow to, between all the stuff i have to do for the for the instruments coming up with sounds programming the light show, making video, all that stuff. It takes about 75 hours um, just to build it. And then, you know, I have to rehearse it and all that. But it's because I I really, it, it, it means a lot to me when people show up, you know, when people come out and, and they want to see me on stage. So I feel that, that, that I owe it to them to really give them a show. So um, that's what that was about. And it's, it's, it's probably like the central driving philosophy in terms of what I do on stage. All right, so here we go. Favorite bars here in Austin. So some of your favorite bars that you love to play at, we gotta know. I really, so I really like, um, I really like ACL 310, uh, which I know is kind of a weird one, but it's just, it feels like it's a really well-designed stage and my show works out, works really well on it. Um, I'm going to give you three. I also really like uh, Empire. Oh, it's uh, a great place. Great, yeah. yeah, great venue. My third one would probably, right now, would probably be Mohawk. But we have so many, there's so many great venues here. There's so many great rooms to play. You pick your poison, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, wonderful. So a little bit about, uh, I don't know, so we talked about 
Twitter and whatnot earlier, as using our social media platforms. And so one of the things here at Ibble, the thing, one of the things that we do is that we basically create a platform, a, vi a video platform for you to catch up on your basically the latest news, trending topics, things like that. And it's a place where you can actually go and interact with basically your fans. So um, what would you say is one of the, through this pandemic has been probably your best aid media wise to help you can stay connected with your fans? I don't know. I don't know if I could pinpoint one thing, honestly. I think um, I'm not naturally uh, inclined to be on social media. If I didn't, <laughs> if I didn't have to do it for do it professionally, I, I don't think Absolutely. I would be on there. Absolutely. But, um, but I think just having, honestly, for, for, for me, for us, um, just having, being reachable in a bunch of different ways because uh, we're, we're across so many different social media. Uh, but just having, having a bunch of different points of entry where people can feel like they can connect with you. Um, people have, people have really uh, taken advantage of it uh, in a good way uh, during the pandemic to reach out to us and, and let us know, you know, how, how much the music means and, and all that. Uh, so, so that's a bad answer, but I mean, no, it's good. It's good. That was just, look, that was a shameless plug, by the way, of me plugging in my job, my employer said, Hey, yeah. look, come over. We would love for you to come over to Ibo sometime. Check, try, try us out, yeah. check us out, uh, you know, become active with us. We all have our, uh, kind of our own little media platforms that we like to use, but I feel like me personally, I love using using it because there's people that follow me i get to talk to them as a news event is occurring so it's been one of those things that it just allows you to become a little bit more interactive with your following which we all have that so yeah, but yeah so moving forward what are we looking at acl weekend is here mm -hmm. what are we looking to do this uh, this with things the way they are what are you personally looking to do as mobile is going on to the stage and performing for your fans. I so we I'm going to be part of the the ACL live stream. Uh, I think my set is Sunday at eight, um, okay. and I'm going to be playing some music from the new record uh, and debuting a new song actually. Oh really? Can we get a, hey? Can we get a little? Can you drop a little clues bomb for us here at Ibble? Just a little snippet. Can we get a small snippet exclusive to Ibble, please? I'll tell you. I'm I'm gonna I'm 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 lay it on you thick. I'm an Austin tonight. I'm from the city. I love music. I love ACL. I'll tell you the song. The, the title of the song is Mate. Mate. All right. We'll take it. Well, man, we cannot wait. With Mate, we cannot wait, my man. Excellent. Well, Moby, we really appreciate you taking out your time today. Yes. Um, uh, if you have anything that you want to share, what, last words with us before you go. Especially, I love. By the way, I love that charity. By the way, and we'll try to add that actually that description or the link to that in our comments below. Absolutely. Yeah, um, people can find me at MobleyWho.com, M-O-B-L-E-Y-W-H-O.com, and I'm I'm very reachable. Hey, look, if you're ever hungry, come out Sundays. I have a little turkey joint that I run on Sundays over there at Mueller. Please feel free okay. to come and get you. I take care of you and all your friends. Come check it out. Texas Best Seats. Please make sure you check it out. All right. Sounds good, man. Awesome. Thanks, Mobley. I appreciate it again, man. Good luck on, your, uh, on stage and on ACL coming this weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it.